Has Europe resorted in denying the seriousness of the attacks as a defense strategy to avoid offending its Chinese economic partner? During our investigation, we discover an attack that should have been disastrous. Between 2015 and 2018, thousands of diplomatic documents were stolen. These documents, called cables, came from Koryu, the European Union's diplomatic messaging system. This IT tool connects EU member states to European institutions. It is intended to facilitate cooperation in foreign policy and crisis management. Federica Bicchi, a professor of international relations, is one of the few who has studied how Corio works. It is quite a niche topic. But it is actually quite an important topic. And there is a sort of an assumption uh, that diplomats uh, go to Brussels and talk in Brussels face to face. But uh, this is obviously quite far from reality, uh, where uh, a vast majority of interactions actually happen via email uh, or electronic means. Um, and the Correo system is a way that was introduced quite earlier on uh, to exactly fulfill that uh, function in a secure manner. By getting their hands on this large quantity of classified documents, hackers can follow the day-to-day -day development of European foreign policy. In one of the stolen cables, a European mission chief warns of Chinese ambitions in Africa. The EU would benefit from elements for an updated strategy regarding its engagement with China and Africa, taking China as a partner, but also as a competitor and possibly even a threat. Yet this theft of Europe's sensitive data was not revealed by its intelligence agencies, but by a US cybersecurity firm, Area One. Its short report on the attack explains that the hackers didn't target the Koryu system itself. They broke into one of the network's points, the Cyprus Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It was there, on an international server, that they managed to get their hands on thousands of Koryu documents. We meet Oren Falkowitz, the president of Area 1, who's based in Berlin, Germany. Before working in the private sector, he was a member of an elite hacker unit of the NSA, the US Cyber Intelligence Agency. The former American hacker is adamant that China is responsible for the Koryu hack. How confident are you, in this case, uh, in your attribution to China? Oh, yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. We employ a team of renowned experts. Um, the report is signed by those people, and nobody has refuted uh, you know, our assertions. Uh, they are factual, and I don't think it's necessary to uh, publish wasteful pages of paper around something that can be said in a sentence. Mm -hmm. And so what made you realize that the attackers had access to the Koryu cables? Uh, the cables themselves. Like we saw the attackers stealing the cables and saw the cables themselves. And so it was pretty, pretty obvious at that point. Um, how did you see that? In accordance with the traditions of espionage, the security specialist keeps his methods secret. 
And so how did the hackers get access to the curry cables? Can you walk us through the attack a bit? Yeah, I mean, so like, like in every cyber attack, you know, it's, it starts with phishing. It's an attempt to get a user or a human, just like you and I, to take an action unwittingly. That can be receiving an email and you have a link, and that link tells you you need to reset your Google or your Microsoft uh, email password, but that's really a fake website, and now you've given the attacker your username and password. But the important thing to know is that 95% of all cybersecurity attacks begin with phishing. How sophisticated was this attack? Well, I don't think it was very sophisticated, but <laughs> so not sophisticated. <laughs> There's a version of cyber attacks that you read about in the newspapers. There's a version that you see in the movies, and then there's the reality about what's happening. Most of the activities that this Chinese attributed group is, is undertaking are, are generally unsophisticated and they're kind of routine. But what, what's significant is what you can do kind of being unremarkable. At this point, only Oren Falkowitz and his company Area One attribute the hacking of European diplomacy to China. After several months of investigation, no one has confirmed or denied this attack and its Chinese origin. Should we believe Area One, whose founders are former American agents? A contact whose identity we must conceal sends us information that turns our investigation on its head. A password used by the attackers. European diplomatic documents are stored in the computer systems of the Cyprus Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The hackers managed to break in, but to avoid detection, they didn't directly retrieve the diplomatic cables. They gathered them in a file protected by their own password. Love ZK 1980. Searching for this password on the Chinese web, we find an internet user whose pseudonym is LoveZK1980. To our knowledge, there is only one. On one of the most popular Chinese discussion forums, user LoveZK1980 posted several messages in 2012 in the military section. An erroneous wording in one of my posts about a senior staff member caused a great misunderstanding within the staff. I have apologized for my mistake, so I ask you to kindly delete the message. In another post, he specifies, the third department of the general staff, which is the branch of the Chinese military specializing in cyber espionage at that time. This is the department that the Chinese military indicted by the US in 2014 depended on. In a commercial register, we find Love ZK 1980 again, but in a different form. An email address to contact a company in an IT group. The main company of this group is located in a big city in the southeast of China. We make our way there. The company is based at the address indicated. Its name is on the entrance sign of the building. On this major Chinese job board, this company says it needs someone to translate documents written in European languages. Job description, research and analyze various documents related to reports, required skill, good command of current events. Good command of current events, one of the skills needed to decipher choreo documents. While there is no indication that the company is hiring to translate stolen cables, it needs people it can trust. 
In another announcement, it says it gives priority to members of the Communist Party. Equipped with a discreet camera, a Chinese-speaking journalist from our team poses as a candidate. Our goal that day to confirm the existence of this company and its need for translators. On the job board, the manager listed for this company has the initials ZK, suspiciously close to Love ZK 1980. He claims to have many years of work experience in Chinese ministries. A few days later, we try to reach him by phone. Hello,你好先生,请问是安徽的智兰吗? 但是，嗯，就是我们想采访一下你们的CEO，你们的老板可以吗？啊，但是不需要，谢谢。您好，您拨打的用户暂时无人接听，请您稍后再拨。We try again by email. The company never respond to our repeated requests for an interview. Radio silence also from the Chinese ambassador to France, Lu Shai. If we review the facts, confidential European diplomatic documents have been stolen en masse. A US company claims it's a Chinese cyber attack. The hacker's password, LoveZK1980, without establishing definitive proof, points to the boss of a Chinese computer company that's looking for European language translators. <laughs> 